Thank you very much, Jim. On this cold and wintry day, we continue to worship by reading the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 16 through 30. Listen now for the Holy Spirit's calling God's word to us. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. Jesus stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. The Lord has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then Jesus began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words coming from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will continue to say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we heard you did at Capernaum. Jesus continued, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet, Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so they might hurl him off the cliff. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The reading of God's word. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Father, we do ask this day that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you challenge us and equip us to be Jesus' presence, and to continue his ministry. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. For three weeks now, we have been asking the question, how can we be respectful to other faith traditions while at the same time believing Jesus is the way the truth, and the life. Last week, the Bible taught us to be fair. To be fair. This week, Jesus further equips us to be his disciples, to be his presence, and to continue his ministry. To equip simply means to supply everything that is necessary for the task at hand or to mentally prepare for something. Before we dive into chapter 4 here, it's important to remind ourselves that the chapters before were all about Jesus being equipped for his ministry. We saw in Luke chapter 2, the 12-year-old Jesus studying God's word being taught by the elders of the temple. 
Not only did Jesus study God's Word as a boy in worship, but there was a very good lesson in there that Jesus learned from his elders and Jesus taught to his parents and us. Our ultimate loyalty is to God, no one else, not even to our parents. Over and above all nationality, religion, even our parents. Last week in Luke 3, John the Baptist was concerned with equity, the quality of being fair and impartial. We also learn from John that repentance has much less to do with guilt, but has everything to do with action, in particular, equitable action. For those who have two coats must share with those who have none. Tax collectors only collect the amount that is needed. Be good stewards. Soldiers, or anyone with power for that matter, don't bully. Don't abuse your power. Jesus is then baptized in front of a large crowd, and as Jesus is praying, the heavens open. And the Holy Spirit descend upon him like a dove, further equipping him, mentally preparing him for what is to come next. The Holy Spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness, and there he encounters the devil. The elders from Jesus' childhood who taught him God's word helped to equip Jesus with God's word to overcome temptation. And we learn that very important lesson from Jesus and from the elders of the temple that when we encounter temptation, having God's word in our mind is the best equipment to overcome obstacles. After Jesus overcomes the devil by remembering God's word, he then begins to worship and teach in synagogues. And here we get the, the message of the Gospel of Luke. We get the purpose of what Jesus came for why he lives, why he breathes, why he is marching to his death is in order to equip us, to mentally prepare us and to give us everything that is necessary to be his presence in the world. If you ever wondered how Jesus worshiped God, Luke 4 gives us a very good sample. It's very similar to what we are doing this very moment. Prayer, reading scripture, hearing a sermon. And Jesus must have been seen as a guest preacher that day. And it seems that uh, maybe they were all excited that the hometown boy was in town. They heard what he had been preaching, what he had been doing in Galilee, in Capernaum. Now he's in Nazareth. And he comes to synagogue to worship. The attendant hands him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. And we can also glean that the prophet Isaiah must have been one of Jesus' favorite books of the Bible. Because when he unrolls it, he knows exactly where to go for his sermon that day. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, to bring recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We see here the Lord has an incredible preaching style. I still have much to learn from Jesus. For anyone who likes a brief compact, concise sermon, Jesus would have been your kind of preacher. 30 seconds, finished, done. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. 
at first. Jesus' friends, neighbors are happy to have Jesus in town. It was good to have him as a guest preacher in his hometown of Nazareth, especially when they thought that the prophet Isaiah was directed at them. They thought they were the ones to be brought the good news. They were the poor ones to hear Jesus and Isaiah's message. They thought they were the ones that were going to be released maybe by, from Roman imperial rule. They thought they were the ones that were going to be healed and have their sight restored, that they were going to receive the year of the Lord's favor and not the world. But Jesus' sermon continued with a pregnant pause. No prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. Do you remember Elijah? For three years, there was a severe famine in Israel, yet God sent Elijah to a foreigner who practiced another religion to be saved. Do you remember Elisha? There were many people in Israel in need in the time of Elisha. Yet God sent a foreign army general who was about to invade and conquer Israel to be healed by Elisha. Jesus' people didn't like that he was preaching that God was calling them to serve foreigners, immigrants, and the world. I guess I never have preached like Jesus because I've never had a congregation want to murder me after the sermon. There's always time to learn. God is always equipping us with the radical form of love when we study God's Word. Jesus mentally prepares us to think outside of walls, outside of nationalities, outside of us versus them kind of thinking. The Lord gives us everything necessary to be his presence, to continue his ministry in the world. These lessons are self-evident when we study God's word in the Bible. What difference does being a Christian make for your life? If you do not have a definite answer to that question, have Jesus teach you the way, the truth, and the life. If you do not have a definite answer for that question of why it matters to your life that you are a Christian, search for Jesus in the Bible. Have Jesus challenge you as he challenges, challenges his people today. Why does it matter that other people are Christian? How can we be respectful to other faith traditions, other ways of living, yet believing that Jesus is Lord? Jesus teaches, in everything, treat people the way you want to be treated while inviting them to the joy that we experience by being a member of Christ's church. 
I preach in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.